Uh, hi everyone, it's Susie again from Esoteric Trading Solutions. I hope you're all well. I hope you're living your life according to the way you want to live it. You've been kind to yourself, you've been kind to your family and friends, you've been kind to your uh, dogs, your putty cats, all the animals in the world, and you've been kind to people in the world just to make this a better place, even to strangers, because honestly, if everyone was kind, we wouldn't have the wars and the horrors that we see. Something that's been um, a bone of contention with me for some time, uh, and I just want to do a YouTube on it because it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And, um, you know, what we see on the real ground, what we see in our everyday life, compared to the stats that the governments are putting out in terms of statistics and that sort of thing. And um, I just don't believe the stats are true, uh, particularly when we talk about CPI, uh, Consumer Price Index, year on year. And the stats that were reported, uh, say, for example, in the US, 1.8%, in the United Kingdom, 1.5%, and in Australia, 1.7%. Now, what, why I have a bone of contention is basically what we see in reality is the price of goods and services going up all the time. And certainly over the last 25 years in Australia, all I can see is the price of goods and services going up, up, up. The price of food going up, the price of utilities going up, electricity, gas, the prices of housing going up, the price of, uh, you know, if you've got a child going to school, school fees, health care, everything, food, transportation and everything else. Now, I cannot understand how they can, how the governments and the statisticians or the Australian Bureau of Statistics, which is what it's called in Australia, can print these figures when on the ground, what we see, the real people see is something completely different. Okay, so I'll give you some evidence uh, towards this because I never say anything without any evidence, all right? So let, let's start with Consumer Price Index. Now, Consumer Price Index basically measures you know, food and beverages, it measures housing, it measures apparel, it measures transport, it med measures medical care, recreation, education and communication and other goods and services. And it's weighted accordingly to some mathematical formula that the Australian Bureau of Statistics brings out. And I know over the years that measure has changed quite substantially. Okay, so they do measure measure this sort of thing. Uh, they measure this and they basically, you know, come up with some figure uh, that's supposed to be CPI. So in other words, year on year, prices are only going up by 1.5% or 1.7% year on year, a basket of all these prices, which honestly, I don't believe. I'm very, very sceptical indeed. I have to say, uh, very, very sceptical indeed. So when we look at things, if we go into anything, so, so say, for example, the medium house price, and look, I don't need to tell you guys this, but where am I going with this? Okay, where I'm going with this is if consumer price indices are not being measured properly and the price and inflation is higher than what the statisticians are saying, which I believe it is, then interest rates should not be low. Okay, the price of money should be a lot higher than what it is. You know, whether it be 1%, whether it be 0.75% or a 10-year bond at 2.3%. The mechanism for pricing risk has, in my mind, been kept down purposely low through consumer price indices, the way that uh, central banks in the Australian and the statisticians are actually measuring consumer price indice. And I don't believe for a minute the consumer price indice is actually low. I believe CPI is actually a lot higher than what the statisticians are saying. And I, I would even say CPI in uh, on my bit would be around 10% per annum, which in other words, if you believe the Taylor's rule, uh, the Taylor's rule, which is, you know, G, uh, growth national product, GDP, I should say, plus CPI, then, you know, interest rates should not be at 2%. The Taylor's rule basically assumes if you had GDP growth of 4% and you had CPI at 2%, then a 10-year bond rate should be at 6%. Okay, notwithstanding that all those sort of models have broken down since 2008, but I do believe the pricing mechanism for cash is wrong. And we've already seen that in the repo market where the pricing mechanism went from literally 1% to 15% within two hours. 
the pricing mechanism, and I'll say it again, is actually incorrect. So if I'll focus on Australia. So we look at Australia in the last 20 years, okay? Uh, dwellings have more than uh, tripled in the last 20 years, according to prop, proptology analysis. And this is in 180 cities and towns in Australia. Uh, in the last two decades, uh, and this is an average, they're saying in the last two decades, property has gone up by 61%. Now, I live uh, in a suburb in Melbourne, and I can tell you something, in 1999, a two-bedroom house was $125,000. Now, in the year 2019, a two-bedroom house in a suburb in Melbourne is about $1.25 million, okay? Now, according to CPI, they don't include that in the price measure, which I find incredible because it's the largest purchase that anyone is going to make, any normal average person. So property has gone up in some areas in Melbourne particularly, and I will focus on Australia because that's what I know clearly, and I'm sure it's like this everywhere else in the world. It's gone up tenfold, okay, in the last 20 years or so. When we see wage prices for the average person have declined. So in other words, our purchasing power has got worse and worse. Property is going up like by the masses, and yet our purchasing power is getting lower and lower. Okay, that's number one. If we look at healthcare costs, and again, I'm focusing on, you know, Australia. You know, healthcare costs have literally in the last, you know, 10 years, I would say more than doubled or tripled, okay? Uh, basically, even looking at it, say, from 2013 to 2018, Healthcare costs went up 18%, 18%. How can consumer price index be at 1.7%? Everyone needs healthcare because if you don't have it, it's going to cost you a fortune, uh, you know, to basically go to the hospital and get anything done, um, you know, which is at, you know, which is incredible. And you think that it's gone up 18% within five or six years. But again, it doesn't seem to be reflected in the uh, CPI. Why is this? Why? Um, I honestly don't believe the stats at all. When we look at private school fees, now I don't have kids, but I know that if you have children and you put them through school, apparently, you know, they're literally more than tripled. Uh, they're, 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 you know, out doing the price of inflation. And apparently many families uh, in Australia are stressed by, you know, school fees, which are, you know, apparently phenomenal. Uh, in Sydney, I've heard they're like 50000 per annum or something. In Melbourne, you know, maybe it's twenty five. But again, you know, these prices are going up and why aren't they reflected in the consumer price index, which then feeds through into inflation, okay? So these are the questions I'm actually asking and I think these are the questions we all need to ask. Um, if you look at how that they calculate the government's they're supposed to include, and this is in Australia, um, in a basket, 11 major groups, food and non-alcoholic beverages, alcohol and tobacco. I can tell you food's gone up dramatically. Alcohol's gone up dramatically. Tobacco has gone up dramatically. I know when I was a kid and we used to buy cigarettes that were like $2 for a pack of 20, now people that smoke, my, my friends that smoke are telling me that it's $50 for a packet of cigarettes. Uh, clothing and footwear might have gone down because it's being imported by China. Housing's gone up dramatically. Uh, furnishing, maybe white goods have come down because they're being imported by China. But certainly health, transport, communication, recreation and culture, education, insurance and financial services have all gone up. So how can we, how can a government say or a statistician or the Australian Bureau of Statistics say that all these figures have gone down, all these prices, when they're not. We know that food price inflation uh, is up for the last five years about 40%. You know, there's been riots in India over the price of rice, Bangladesh. I mean, it just, it goes on and on. Um, it just doesn't make sense, honestly. And, and, you know, and if we look at that, you know, how can that be? How can that be when, you know, inflation is high and yet the cost of money is still low because the central banks and the Australian Bureau of Statistics are keeping inflation low. It doesn't make sense. 
So if we look at food rights, there's been food rights in 2008 and 2011 for because of price rises, okay? Food prices are up about 36% in the last five years. Uh, you know, again, if we go back on this story here, and I believe this because I've been overseas quite a bit, and everywhere I go, food prices are going up even more, okay? Food prices go up because of high oil, high gas prices. Uh, they go up because of drought. And we've seen a lot of drought over the years. Uh, if anything, you know, there was a drought in the Depression in the US, and that's what sent food prices up as well. Um, we've seen, you know, the cost of grain rise, corn for ethanol, wheat, soybeans, all the main things that the third world eats, okay? Rice for one you know, all the main staple things they eat, okay? Uh, because of extreme weather, we've seen food prices go go up, gas emissions, which are heating up uh, the weather all over the world. There's been massive floods everywhere. Uh, again, you know, it just goes on and on. Uh, corn crops being used for ethanol. So again, corn is going up, not just for food, but it's going up because it's being used for ethanol. Um you know, if you look at some of the figures, I've seen figures on food price inflation go up dramatically, okay? According to this, food price uh, ran up to 6.4% in 2008. Again, if you look at 2011, it went up 48 and apparently there was the Arab Spring uprising and it was about food, okay? We saw massive wildfires in Russia and, again, Russia, uh, you know, in, uh, export a lot of food, massive amount of food. There's been droughts in the US, droughts in uh, Queensland here in New South Wales. There was an earthquake in Japan. Again, according to these figures, food price rose 2.5%. I actually believe food rose more than this, okay? There was uh, problems in Iran because of food. You know, there was problems in India because of food. Rice went up dramatically. According to this, food prices went up by 0.9%. I don't believe it. Uh, if you look at pork in China, there is a massive shortage of pork, and pork just for this year is up 40%. I mean, food prices are up much more than this, and I just don't believe uh, these stats are correct. I think they're actually not right at all. Fresh vegetables are 4.7%. Uh, 2014, up another 2.4%. 2015, 1.9% of these figures are right. Beef and veal, 7.2%. Eggs rocketed to 17.8%. Uh, again, you know, these, some of these rises are staggering, okay, staggering, and they're not being reflected in CPI, you know, the consumer price index that we have to buy and pay for food every day of our lives. Again, according to this, food prices rose by 8.2%. Uh, this 2018, 1.6%, but I'd imagine this year, you know, food's going to be a lot higher. I mean, when there's riots in 2008 and 2011 because of food, prices, you know something is wrong and you know the measures of what the Australia, what the uh, statisticians are using, the measures are not correct, okay? And what that means is, is if consumer price indexes are being purposely, uh, if they're not being measured properly and they're not showing the real inflation, okay, just bear with me and let me explain this, uh, it means that interest rates have been kept too long, too low for too long, and it means it's not pricing the risk mechanisms properly. So in other words, we see an inflated equity market because interest rates have been kept too low for too long and it's not reflecting the real world case that me and you experience every day of our lives when we go shopping, okay, or when we have to pay utility bills. I mean, I don't know what it's like for you guys, but, you know, for for 59-day utility bill here for a gas bill in Australia, it cost me $330 and I barely use gas. My electricity bill is about the same, $330 for two months. I can tell you years ago, uh, for a two-month bill, 20 years ago, it used to be about $70 and I would have used more years ago than I do now. You know, people, old people can't afford to even pay for, for, for heating. Here. They have to rely on their son or their daughter. So something is not right, and I don't believe it, and I do believe that interest rates should be higher than what they are, and if that's the case, risk markets, i.e., you know, high-yield credit markets, emerging market debt spreads, which are all expensive, and the equity market, which is expensive, should be a lot lower because the pricing mechanism for money is not correct, and we saw that with the repo market as well. 
You know, and then there's this uh, report from The Guardian, which I do believe, and I do like The Guardian very much because it tells it how it is. It says, special reporters, living costs skyrocket, the usual economic assumptions no longer apply. And I believe this, and I do contribute to The Guardian because it's an independent journalism and I think it's very good. They're basically talking about, you know, workers in Australia, living standards have stagnated, if not gone lower. Uh, price wages are not going up and the cost of living is going through the roof. And and that's what we're pretty much seeing, okay? Discretionary spend is getting lower and lower. Wage prices are not going up. Uh, wages are getting lower and lower. Employers are not paying according to the uh, the industry wage, minimum wage. They're paying people under the table. Uh, there's been a lot of employees in Australia that have been caught and they've been shut down, okay, for not paying people the proper wage. So, again, these stats, again, are not reflecting reality at all as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, wage prices are going down. The purchasing power of the consumer is less and less and something is just not right. We are being, as far as I'm concerned, telling a lie. Even Powell came out the other day and said there's uh, risks in markets if interest rates are kept too low because it makes people chase any sort of return, whether it be high yield returns or emerging market returns or equity returns because interest rates are so low. And it means that people, uh, fund managers or retail investors are buying equities just to get some sort of return. And it creates more risk markets because equity markets, as we know, the Dow's gone through 28,000. It keeps going up and up and up. And it's not reflecting the real value of where a stock should be because interest rates are low. Okay. So what is the relationship between CPI and interest rates? And that's a very strong relationship, as I said. Again, uh, there's an economic assumption with the Taylor rule, which equals GDP plus inflation. And a 10-year bond should equal GDP plus inflation. If we believe that inflation, as I said, is at 6% and GDP is at 2 then a 10-year bond should be at 8%. Okay, So this, according to Investopedia, inflation rates are often linked and frequently referenced in macroeconomics. Okay, So generally... Uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia or the Fed will raise rates uh, if inflation is going up. And as you can see, it, there's a very strong correlation. If inflation's moving down, they will tend to ease interest rates. Inflation's moving up, they will start to rate hike interest rates, okay? So what we've got here is inflation, uh, you know, inflation was starting to rise and they raise rates and they brought them down, down, down. And that's what we've got, okay? So there's a very strong relationship between the two. So look, this is just food for thought, guys, but I really believe the interest rate mechanism, which is supposed to bring uh, equity markets down when there's inflation in the system, is not working properly because interest rates have been purposely kept down through quantitative easing, through cuts, but also I don't believe consumer price index is being measured properly. So that has a substantial influence uh, on on uh, fiat markets uh, and all financial markets in the world, and also and and also I do tend to agree with uh, Powell that it can create incredible risk within the financial system. Anyway, guys, food for thought. Please look after yourself. Please look after your family and friends. Look after your putty cats, the animals in the world, just people in the world, just to make this place a better place. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.